you know, the, the winds are such that it would be difficult to, to, to categorize them all. Did we join some of these shadow groups uh, to work against uh, some of the early efforts? Yes, that's true. Uh, but there's nothing, there's nothing illegal about that. Yeah. This is Keith McCoy, one of ExxonMobil's top Capitol Hill lobbyists. And this is Dan Easley. Until February this year, he was Exxon's leading White House lobbyist. Unearthed, posed as recruitment consultants, and told them we had a client who admired their work. Then we interviewed them on Zoom and asked them to tell us what they and the other lobbyists at Exxon have been up to. ExxonMobil is so powerful that the management suite at its global headquarters is known as the God Pod. Until recently, it was the biggest, richest corporation in the history of the world. For decades, critics have claimed Exxon deploys cynical, aggressive lobbying techniques to pull the strings of government while running clandestine campaigns to block action on climate change, discredit its opponents, and distract attention from its polluting activities. But not one of its serving senior executives has ever come clean about the Exxon playbook until now. Here's what Dan Easley and Keith McCoy told us. Mr. McCoy revealed that behind the scenes, the company has been working hard to undermine President Biden's $2 trillion infrastructure plan. The White House proposal included spending hundreds of billions on clean energy and transport as part of the most ambitious clean energy legislation ever proposed by a U.S. president. And it would have been paid for by higher taxes on corporations like Exxon. But these ambitious proposals are on the verge of being defeated. According to Mr. McCoy, Exxon has been working to scale back the legislation and stop Exxon paying more tax. He told us which United States senators the company sought to recruit to their lobbying campaign. And they're not all Republicans. We're playing defense because the President Biden's talking about this big infrastructure package and he's gonna pay for it by increasing corporate taxes. You stick to highways and bridges, then a lot of the, the negative stuff starts to come out because- right. For you guys. Because there's, there's a germaneness, right? There's this, it, it, that doesn't make any sense for a highway bill. Why, why would you put in, why would you put in a, uh, uh, something on uh, uh, emissions reductions on climate change uh, to oil refineries in a highway bill? Who's the crucial guys for you? Well, Senator Capito, who's the ranking member on Environment and Public Works, Joe Manchin, I talk to his office every week, and he is the kingmaker uh, on this because he's a Democrat from West Virginia, which is a very conservative state, and, and he's not shy about sort of staking his claim early yeah. and completely changing the debate. So on the Democrat side, we look for the moderates on these issues. So it's the Manchins, it's the cinemas, it's the testers. Exxon is even trying to get through to President Biden through his friend, Senator Chris Coons. Other ones that aren't talking about is Senator Coons, who's from Delaware, who has a very close relationship with Senator Biden. So we've been working with his office. Matter of fact, our CEO is talking to him next Tuesday. Then you, you take it out a little bit more and you say, OK, well, who's up for re-election in 2022? That's Hassan, that's Kelly. And then obviously the Republicans. We have a great relationship with the senators where we have assets. I, I can't worry about the 2027 class because they're not focused on re-election. The 2022 class is focused on re-election. So I know I have them. Those are the Marco Rubios. Those are the Senator Kennedys. Those are the Senator Danes. So you can have those conversations with them because they're a captive audience. They know they need you and I need them. Dan Easley left Exxon earlier this year after nearly eight years lobbying for the corporation. He described just how big a problem Biden's original proposal posed for oil and gas companies. Oh, it's gonna be replete with provisions that will be difficult for oil and gas. Take away tax, um, you know, uh, favorable tax treatment, um, you know, they're gonna raise the corporate rate, um, and then a whole host of environmental, new, new environmental requirements. Right. And, and, and procurement requirements from the federal government to purchase you know, green energy and uh, renewable technologies and, you know, retrofitting federal buildings and all, all of, I mean, it's, it's going to accelerate the transition to the extent that I think four years from now, it's going to be difficult to unwind that. So we're all living in a different world. For years, Exxon has claimed it supports a carbon tax. When they came out for the policy, it surprised a lot of people. But does Exxon really believe in a carbon tax or is it a ploy? to make the company look responsible 
while giving them cover to aggressively oppose climate regulations that would hit their bottom line. Nobody is going to propose a tax on all Americans. And the cynical side of me says, yeah, we kind of know that, but it gives us a talking point that we can say, well, what is ExxonMobil for? Well, we're for a carbon tax. What you said was just really interesting. So what, so it's basically never gonna happen, right? Is the calculation? Yeah. No, it's not, it's not gonna, carbon tax isn't gonna happen. So this helps me understand a little bit why suddenly a lot of, car, a lot of US oil majors are talking about a carbon tax because it sounds pretty, uh, well, I, 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 the cynical side of me, they've got nothing else. Yeah. It's an easy talking point yeah. to say, um, look, I'm for a carbon tax. So that's the talking point. That, that is a, in my mind, an effective advocacy tool. Until February. Dan Easley was Exxon's main man lobbying the White House. He gave us an insight into the relationship between Exxon and the previous administration when he detailed the successive lobbying victories the company secured under Trump. This includes issuing thousands of new oil and gas drilling permits, which critics argue are incompatible with efforts to tackle climate change. In the executive branch and regulatory team for Exxon um, had extraordinary success over the last four years in large part because the administration was so predisposed to, um, you know, to, to, to helping. What were the big wins you got out of, out of Trump? <laughs> you should Google ExxonMobil announcement and Donald Trump. So he live Facebook from the West Wing, our big growing the Gulf project. He mentioned us in two states of the union. Yeah. We were able to get uh, investor state dispute settlement protections in NAFTA. We were able to rationalize the permit environment and, you know, get tons of permits out. The, I mean, you know, the, the winds are such that it would be difficult to, to, to categorize them all. I mean, tax has to be the biggest one, right? The reduction of the corporate rate and um, was, was, you know, you know, it's probably worth um, billions to tax on. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there were, there, there were a lot of, of, of wind. Mr. McCoy then told us how Exxon aggressively fought to discredit climate science. He also told us how, even now, talking down solutions to global warming, like renewable energy and electric vehicles, is critically important to the work Exxon does in Washington, D.C. Did we aggressively fight against um, uh, some of the science? Uh, yes. Uh, did we hide our science? Absolutely not. Uh, did we uh, did we join some of these shadow groups uh, to work against uh, some of the early efforts? Yes, that's true. Uh, but there's nothing there's nothing illegal about that. We were looking out for our investments. We were looking out for our shareholders. And you're not going to be able to just switch to battery operated vehicles or wind for your electricity. And just having that conversation around why that's not possible in the next 10 years is critically important to the work that we do. So, um, and, and, and that's at every phase. That's, that's, that's in the Senate, that's in the House, that's with the administration. On uh, something like climate change, there's some forest fires, there's an increase of, you know, 0 0.001 you know, Celsius, um, that, that doesn't affect their people's everyday lives. For decades, the decisions made in Exxon's God Pod have had an impact on the lives of every American, maybe every human being on the planet. They held back action on climate change and used their power and money to ensure Washington politicians were working for them, not us. Now we have a better idea of what they did and how they did it. And crucially, now we know they're still doing it. ExxonMobil released this statement. The report contained a number of important factual misstatements that are starkly at odds with our positions, including on climate policy and our firm commitment to carbon pricing. Our lobbying efforts on the infrastructure bill are related to a tax burden that could disadvantage U.S. business. We have supported climate science for decades. Our lobbying efforts comply with all laws and are publicly disclosed. Go to unearthed.greenpeace.org to read the company's full response. 
Unearthed is an investigative journalism project of Greenpeace UK.